Welcome everyone to the class uh, Tuesday night, uh, mastering the middle game, and uh, we're gonna go over one of my games, and I will kind of go through the opening without spending too much time on it because the class is on middle game. So, and then we'll focus on the middle game a little bit more. One thing I can tell you, my opponent is a very serious grandmaster, 2664 Fresinet, and this was played in the last round of the National Open Big Tournament in Las Vegas. So this is one of those games where winner takes all. Mm -hmm. So big, big money game because winner takes first prize. So a lot of the guys made short draws, so they didn't want to go for the first, so they just made quick draws, and so this, this was a big game. D4, D5, C4, E6. Name of the opening? Declined, declined, yes. But then he switches to C6. Now, this changed the name now. It looked like it's gonna be a QGD, but now it's a different opening. What is this called? Semislav, Semislav. If there is E6 pawn, we call that a Semislav. If there is no E6 pawn, that's a pure Slav. So I played E3. I didn't feel like going into this D takes C4 and B5, all this, you know, bio, you know, all this, you know, complicated variation. So I figured I'd just play E3. Knight F3, Knight F6. So this was very fashionable, actually. In 2009, this was very, very fashionable, this system. It just came out, and guys like Aronian, some top-notch players, they were playing this and becoming more and more fashionable. I used this at the US Championship 2009 a couple of games with some good success there. And uh, so 2009 was a you know, pretty good year for me, actually. I had a good showing at the US Championship then. Uh, you will see this game turned out to be very well also, which helped me to win the tournament. Uh, anyway, there were some good results overall. Um, so this is still theory. Again, I just uh, gonna kind of get to the main point here. And somewhere around here, we're still in a theory a little bit, but from here on, let's say you don't know the theory here. Let's say you just saw this position first time in your life, yeah? And uh, looking at it, what is Black trying to do here? What is the typical idea in this kind of positions, do you know? Black has two plans in this position, and that's, that's about it. If none of the plans would work, then he's just clearly worse in this kind of structure where you have a d4 pawn versus this. So how can you do that? Maybe yeah. power, Excellent thinking, yes. So he wants to play a6 and c5, or he wants to play e5, okay? So now, I played the move rook d1, which actually prevents both ideas. c5 and e5, he stops it, okay? Stop c5 and e5. So he goes queen b8. Now he's trying to do queen b8 and now putting pressure on h2. h2 pawn is under attack. Now what to do with this pawn? Huh? Make a luft. Make a luft. Well, let's think about it. Luft, there are other things we need to do first. So, don't have time for Luft, okay? Where is Luft? Luft is the German word for air. When you push one of your pawns, this, oh. that's Luft, yeah, this Luft. Creating an escape square, okay. flight square, you know, that's what they call it. Luft, it's, I think, the most proper way that they often use in the books. Escape square, you could say that. So, no, but no time for Lufts here. There are more serious things needs to be done. I don't think we have completed the development. And queen b8 might look strange to you, but that's actually the best move. And this guy I'm playing, uh, Vresine, if you're not familiar with him, he actually was on 2008, he was the second for, for Vladimir Kramnik in a World Championship match against Vichy Anand. So a very serious theoretician. He's not just making moves here. This guy's analyzed his position. But uh, I've had a good preparation myself in this line, so it was kind of an interesting battle. And uh, I think I, I somehow, yeah, I think I got a better game than he did here. So what's the move here? I need you to play logical. Yes? It looks like I have enough strength to push e4 and start. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
you know, e4 is your most natural move, and remember my concept. Usually, the natural moves are your best moves. So you go for it. That gives you a threat. Everybody sees the threat, I assume. e5, trying to fork it. Trying to fork it, yeah? So he has to do something. To do that, so that's why he had to do something. So he played the move e5, he has to do that. That's a typical way to stop it, because otherwise, there is no, uh, no good reply. So he played here. Now, what to do? Here, you need to make a good move here. This is not an easy moment here to make a decision, so let's, uh, I'm going to give you time to think on this, because there are several moves you can play here, but which one would be the best? You're trying to obtain uh, a small opening advantage and try to improve that opening advantage to more. So what move I'm talking about here? D takes C, correct? He played knight takes e5. And now if you take, he just takes back with the bishop. And it's not, uh, it's not totally clear. A very subtle move here you have to make to create threats. You make this move and then suddenly you have some threats. Bishop f4. Bishop f4, that loses a piece. Knight takes knight check, and then he takes your bishop. So that's a discovery. Yeah, the bishop f4 would have been nice, but if that king wasn't here, then it would have been an excellent move. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately here that loses to discovery. Who is going to be able to find a subtle move here that will, without it, no advantage. We need that move if we want to have some type of advantage. Yes? G3. G3 is a move that actually some other grandmasters played in this position. So that's a very decent showing right there. But <coughs> how about the best move? G3 is not a bad move. Actually, computer probably suggested G3. It's the top two move. My move is the first move, but the other one is not bad. GMs play G3 here. So that's a good move. G3 shuts down the dark score bishop. That's the positive thing about it. King h1, no good. Knight h4, a little bit dangerous on the brim. How about instead of going to the side, you go to the center with that knight? Right? Remember, knight on the rim is dim, right? Why are we going there, Danny? Why here? Why not centralize? Centralization, remember? We talked about that before. Now, what is the threat? Who is going to point out the threat? One, two, one, two. One, two, remember? That is a serious threat. How about this beautiful square for the knight to go to? I think you might be interested in that, eh? getting the knight out there. So, well, of course, he knew this. So he played the move knight g6. I wasn't very familiar with this move at that time. I had analyzed the move knight eg4 before. So knight g6, he attacked my pawn on h2. So now I need to protect it. I have two ways to do it. How are you going to do it? Huh? Well, you have to protect the pawn. Either you can play g3 or you can play h3. So the best thing is g3 to shut down the bishop. Now it goes rook e8. Now he is putting pressure. Now, he is threatening to play b4, attacking your knight and pick up the pawn. So you have to play it smart, OK, to defend against that threat. You don't want him to allow this, OK? You got to stop it. Yes? Better. a3, he will play a5. So you got to do better. You got to do better. Uh, it's better not to start immediately defending, you know? Always remember, defending, yeah, that's the natural instinct. He creates a threat, we start defending. How about we try to do some attack, perhaps? Because, you know, we can try to make him to get passive, right? Nice. What else?
Martin? No? Okay, who's going to find the right move here? Best defense is a good attack. Are you trying to attack? Yeah. Go. How about bishop g5? Developing the bishop and creating a serious threat to eliminate that knight from f6, because that's what you want to do. You want to eliminate that attack. Got it? Because that way you will create weaknesses. Goes bishop to e5. He's protecting it. Now, if he had played this move, there's a beautiful line. You take, he takes. You take. If he takes back, knight f5 check, picks up the bishop. So he takes, you take, he takes, double check. Checkmate. See how that works? When your piece is placed on the good squares and you're playing proper chess, good things are going to happen to you. So you make sure you do that. Put your pieces on good squares, okay? Don't do anything too unusual, okay? Every piece should be placed on a good normal square. Now I go here. And he's got some threats now. He wants to take and play some c5 ideas. So what could be done here? What could be done here? <laughs> yes. Knight to f5, you mean. Knight belongs where, Martin? In the center, on an active square. Knight f3 again, you're playing retreat moves. No. Go active, OK? Now you may think, wait a minute, this loses a pawn. No, it's not. If he takes with this, how about that? See? Always be on offense, OK? He takes. No problem. No problem. Knight h6 mate. So if he takes, come in, OK? So what to do in this position? So he goes rookie 6 He's trying to play some defense moves. Now what to do? <coughs> this is a very important move here to make. Because he's, uh, you know, he's defending his position and getting ready to start questioning my bishop now. What do you think is the correct move here? Absolutely f4. Attacking that bishop. That bishop is a very powerful piece. What do you want to do to it? Move him away. If he takes on c3 again, I just take back with the queen. I'm happy there. So he retreats here. Now it looks my king is exposed, yeah? And in particular, this pawn is now very vulnerable. What are you going to do now to defend this vulnerable pawn? Push it. Push it. Risky, risky. Solidify the position first. So now, what are you going to do now? You got to solidify the position. Yes. Bishop f3 first. He goes check. It was before attacking you. Now he's attacking your knight. And when you move away, there could be some danger here. So what are you going to do here? Knight a4, I wasn't so sure. I could go knight a4, but you need to do something better here. Knight a4 is a little bit weakening the position. Maybe you can do something better to reduce the tension. 
There is too much tension right now in the center. I think you might want a little bit reduce that tension. Bishop of course, bishop takes f6. Reduce that. Mm -hmm. And now knight a4. By the way, when they play b4 in this kind of uh, positions, your knight a4 is the typical square to go with the knight, OK? So try to remember that. Typical square to go is a4, because then you want to go to c5. Now you played c5. And now you need to make a decision what to do. It looks like he opened up his light square bishop. And uh, there are some ideas for you here to take the bishop uh, on b6, but we don't want to do that because he takes back with a pawn. If we take on c5, he has rook c6 ideas. So we are not too sure what to do. Rook d7, but then bishop c6, I'm not sure what you're going to do. If I ride away, check. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check. Check. Takes now. This guy is hanging. Ah, yeah, yeah. G6, and you lose the knight. And then there might be some consequences. You might not lose right away, but. It's not winning for us. For us, <coughs> yes, Martin. Question? He will. I don't know. So, but your idea is correct. That's the good news. So, you, thank you, so thank you. we will need to protect yeah. this guy. We need to protect this guy, and with same idea, okay? okay. So, how are we going to protect him? We got two ways to do it. Rook f1, rook f1 or rook d3, okay? So I go rook f1. Now protecting it. Now he goes queen e8. Attacking this, attacking this. He's trying to put some pressure. Now, do I have complete development here? Specify which rook you think should come on. Rook ad1, he's thinking clearly. The last piece into the game is the rook, he should come in. Now I'm threatening very powerful knight d6, attacking this, attacking that. So he has to go here, bishop c6, putting my knight on a4. Now he's putting pressure here. What are you going to do? Specify. Specify. Take the bishop this. Do we want to take this bishop? Because he takes back with a pawn, he will have a good structure. And then his rook will be actively attacking you. You can also take this pawn, but then he goes rook c8. OK? Let's think, let's gentlemen, let's think, okay? The most important thing is not to rush. Okay, whenever you're gonna make a move that you're rushing, it might be a mistake. <coughs> so take your time. You don't have to, you know, make decision right away here. So what is the right move here? We have three choices here. Knight takes pawn, knight takes bishop, or b3, just to protect it. So which one is the right decision in your opinion? Martin. And he's got the correct answer. B3 with idea knight b2, knight c4. See, that's how you master the middle game. When you can find good positional ideas in a middle game like this, that means you're slowly mastering this part of the game. Rook d8 comes in now. He's trying to exchange the pair of the rooks. What are you going to say? No. Why not? Take it. Take it. Your plan is to play e5, right? And you know my strategy. When you choose a plan, you stick with the plan. Let's go. Attacking the rook and attacking the bishop. He takes, rook takes. See why I brought the rook here? So I can take with the rook. Now, by playing e5, what I accomplish is I take away his two bishops. He no longer has that advantage. And he has a very, how to say, not the best, not the best looking bishop here, so to speak. So here I probably should have just gone boom, put the knight here, and this would have been a little cleaner. But I played here, which I think is also not a bad looking move. Centralizing, 
and trying to obtain the control of the D file. So here goes queen e8. Now queen d5. I suspect he might try to play the move f6. I suspect that, you know. So that's why I played the move queen d5 in anticipation of that so I can go knight d6. Okay? So he goes knight e7, trying to exchange that pair of the knights. I take, he takes. And now, what is the plan? Knight g2. Correct. Knight g4. Okay, let's stop here. <coughs> All uh, participants today, I want them to think a little bit. And each of you mentioned something about this position, okay? You have three minutes to think. And tell me what are the pluses and minuses you can see for this position for white. And tell me the proper evaluation of this position. Is it a small advantage, big advantage for white? Maybe it's equal, maybe it's even winning. So what is the evaluation here? Let's take a good look at this position because in order to find the right plan, you need to be able to evaluate the position correctly. So evaluation is very important. All right, raise your hand. Who wants to start? Okay, what's the evaluation? First question. Um, well, I'll say white's much better. Okay. It's way better than the bishop. Okay. Knight is dominating the bishop. That's correct. D file. D file. <laughs> mm -hmm. More space. Rook D three. Okay, so that's good. What else you can mention? Mm, uh, has some yeah, black has weaknesses, correct. C5 is weak. But Light scores are weak. Can yeah, that's strong, yeah. So white is better. Who else wants to add? There are a few things you can add here, actually. One very important thing you must add here. Yes, in the back? Well, I'm looking at um, queen to a8 as a fork and pick up a pawn. Ah, uh, yeah, but let's structural, something structural you can mention. F6 square is weak. F6 square is weak, could say that. Uh, pass pawn? Well, what do you think? Uh, well, it's not quite a pass pawn, but yeah, it's a good pawn, definitely. But something fundamental you must see here. White king is exposed. White king is exposed, but I have total, total control here. I have a total control. He cannot, he can never attack me here. <coughs> so right now, material looks equal, correct? Mm -hmm. But is it really equal? Is it really equal, the material? Try to see where I'm trying to go with this question. That's true, he's very passive. And the bishop is shut down. Bishop is totally shut down. We <laughs> <laughs> still have to win it. What I'm trying to tell you is, he has three pawns on the queen side here, right? I have two. But thanks to my knight here versus bishop, I basically have an extra pawn on the king side here. Because my pawns are mobile. They can push, push forward, but his pawns are not. So technically, I'm playing actually this game with the extra pawn because the pawn on c5 or not, it doesn't really change too much, okay? So that's why my advantage is big here, not small because of that extra pawn that I have. You understand? So now he played, I played queen a check, threatening to take the pawn, but now he played queen e8. If he had played king g7, I would have gladly taken the pawn, but now he played here. My question to you is, what are you going to do? My question to you is, what are you going to do? Yes? I think if I trade 
trade queens are basically walking into a draw. So I want to. What? What? Think. You think? Go ahead and take the pawn. Well, if you take the pawn, he goes queen c6. And that might get a little annoying, actually, because he pin you. And I don't know if you realize your queen is actually a little bit trapped now on a7. And somebody mentioned f6. f6 is now coming very quickly. The queen actually is going to be in trouble here. So this is very important for you not to rush it, OK? So that's why you don't want to play queen, e, a, queen a7. But endgame, actually, don't be afraid. You're looking at the material-wise. That's why you think it's a draw. But actually, it's not. Okay. Now, who is going to get the d file here? Yes? So if he puts the rook in front of you, right, that's a very simple win because swap, swap, and you walk. Because you have this nice entry with the king, OK? So he cannot afford to do that, so he's going to go rook e6. Now what are you going to do? Rook d7 attacking the bishop. Now he goes rook c6, protecting it. And now what are you going to do? You get up there. You get up there, OK? Now he goes king f8, king e4. Now he attacks you. Rook d2, protecting, protecting. Now he goes here. I played rook d2 so I can protect him. Now I need you to find a plan. What is the correct plan here? H3, D4. Excellent thinking. H3, threatening to play G4. And now, if he played king E7, I was just going to play G4 and F5. So he played F6. And while I was thinking to play my next move, he actually resigned. But let's try to understand why he resigned, the reasoning. Okay. So. I think this king can be improved a little bit more, right? Now I can actually take this and take a couple of pawns and probably win. But I wasn't going to do that. I just really enjoy my advantage here. It's aesthetic advantage here I have. So now I just want to play where I'm stronger at. What does that mean? Where am I stronger here? King side. So let's push. Let's get some open files for our rooks. Our rook. He takes, I take. Now I'm ready to go here. If he moves away, I'm just going to take this with a check. So he, let's say, does something like this. Rook belongs here. Check. Check. He goes back, rank mate. Check. And you just keep taking the pawns and win the game. OK? That's the reason he resigned after the move f6, you know, because then position is just going to be you know, just <coughs> difficult, g4. All right, this was the victory against Grandmaster Fresinet. I want to bring one example to your attention here, and this is a very interesting position. Again, the opening phase, uh, phase just finished here, and you have this position as white that requires to play very precisely if you want to have anything here, OK? So we can say that opening maybe didn't go quite well for black, OK? Yeah, this is a Capablanca game. Capablanca uh, game against Zubarev. So this is the position. <coughs> so let's try to understand what's going on here. If it was black to move, black would instantly castle, and then he would actually have a slightly better position. Because he's got a good blockade, then he would put the knight on c6, rook a d8, and pile up on it. And white, white will be the one who needs to find a way to secure a defense and maybe make a draw. But what can you do here as white? You're white to move here. This is an opening stage just finished, and it was a successful opening stage. Now, you need to take control from here on. Rook e1. Rook e1, absolutely. 
Now he plays f6. Stopping your rook e5, he wants to simply go king f7, tuck it in, put the rook on e8, and say again, I am the one who is slightly better, because you have the isolated pawn. What are you going to do here? How are you going to change things around? Yes? Queen a4, actually, you're going to help him go king f7. I, I already want to go king f7 anyway. So check will actually help me, because I will go there and bring my rook in. Yes? Better. Queen e2, that's right. Now you're threatening mate. Now he goes queen d7, just protects it. Protects check, protects that. Again, if he goes king f7, puts the knight on d5, guess what? Black is the one who's going to be better here. So you're actually one move away from making one mistake here. And then he's going to, yeah, he's going to get a decent position. And in fact, black position is not that bad here. He actually just sort of misplayed it in a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, it's still really risky, but. So now, uh, Capablanca uh, decided to bring his best, uh, you know, his piece into the game, rook c1. Rook a d1 was also very interesting, with the idea to push. And now black plays c6, he wants to control that. And then he thought, okay, I go king f7 next move. c6 turned out to be inaccurate, he should have played king f7 right away. And, uh, you know, it's, after king f7, it's not so clear. White is maybe a little bit better still, but he played this move, c6. Now, now white has that advantage of the development, but if he don't play this move now, I will put my king on f7, put my knight on d5, and I will enjoy the advantage. So what are you going to do? Do we want to exchange queens when we are attacking? And here? Okay, and? Uh, yes, but the problem is now there's no attack anymore. And I will move my knight next and we'll swap the rooks and it will, it will be about, about equal because, I mean, you have a weakness, but I don't think black can Black should win this, but but yeah, you got to be careful exchanging queens because that's not what you want to do here. Exchanging queens will reduce the material. Huh? Queen c4, queen c4 you can, but uh, maybe he'll go long castle or something. That's not out of question, you know. Better. The player with the advantage must attack. Mm -hmm. If he now hesitates. His advantage will dimin diminish here. Now, think about it. What can you try to do to try to open up the position so you have some space? I don't like okay, keep working. Mm -hmm. D5, CD. Which piece now will have an excellent square to go to? There you go. There you go. That's how you attack, okay? d5, threatening d6 ideas, or open up the position. So he takes knight d4. Perfect. Superb square. Superb square for the knight. Now he goes here. Again, he's trying to bring the pieces in. So now you must play this move. What is the idea? Excellent. Now you want to go Rook c7, very powerful idea. So he goes here to defend against that threat. Now, now good move here you have. Activating your pieces and creating threats. Think about it, thinking it through. Close. There you go. Do you see that you're threatening now to take this pawn with a check? and then mate him on f8, that's a very serious move, okay? Mm -hmm. So he has to play this move to stop it. And now, this is the beginning now. How are you going to try this combination now? That is going to... 
Check. King here. Not so evident, you know. So evident yet. Now, Knight what? No, 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 no. It's not hanging, but I'm not sure that's clear, that line. Sack the rook, excellent. Now, e cannot take with the queen because we just take on c8, right? That's, that's clear. We have to make sure we understand why this is losing because of the check. Now, he has to go, to, let's say, d8, check and discovery check wins. Mm -hmm. So, but what if he goes here? This now gets a little bit puzzling now. It's gets a little puzzling because you got some background issues. <laughs> gonna get made it here. Don't trash, don't take anything. You're gonna get made it now. Hey, excellent. If he goes here, queen h7. So he goes here. Excuse me? Rook g8? You, you mean g7 or? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're not yeah. Check. I can't take with the queen, you take on c8. I can't take with the king, you take on d7. So I have to do something. So if I go here, then this check is nice. Here, knight f6, here, just check, okay? So he has to go here, and now, check. And now, keep doing what you're doing. Check again. There we go. Now. Now, if he goes here. Knight h7 and take with check. So he has to go here. And now. Correct. <laughs> if he goes here, you just take this and it's mate. And now, checkmate in three. One, two, three. Come on. Ay, yeah, yeah, 96. Queen takes c6, and you got background problems. Yeah. Check, correct. F7 is better. How about that? Okay. Calculation, calculation. That's what it requires, okay? Long calculation. Let's do this again. You are in command in this position. Capablanca versus Zubarev, 1925, Moscow. They just got out of the opening. Black felt safe, you know. He thought, you know, he's playing a world champion or future champion. So he's, you know, happy, sort of. But one move, that one move can change the position, the character of it. So what's the idea? Show me the win. Keep going. Keep working. Because king f king f eight now knight h seven is good, okay? <laughs> if 
Beautiful. And let's look now why he couldn't just take back. If he takes with a queen, we just go rook c8 wins. So if he takes with this, what are you going to do? Check. Check. Winning the queen. Yeah, so that's why you couldn't just do that, OK? All right, so uh, that's a very, very good example of the game Capablanca versus Zubarev, OK? Excellent. So very important, uh, this tells us, you know, when we have initiative out of the opening, when we are just getting into that middle game stage, this is a good example that you have to play energetically. Especially if opponent king is in the middle of the board, you have to do something to put pressure on it, to create threats, OK? And once you do that, then you're going to have a good position. So always remember to put pressure. If you want to win games, put pressure. More pressure you put upon it, it's more likely he's going to make a mistake. Okay, so remember that to put the pressure. All right, very good, everyone. Thank you.